pragmatic trials, they're, they're really built to answer different questions than traditional randomized clinical trials are. Uh, they're all about answering questions around clinical decisions or health policy decisions, and they're done in a population that's more resembling real world. Example of that is in, in a clinical trial, uh, the population is a very controlled population. You know, they have uh, limited comorbidities. They have specific disorders that you're trying to assess. They're compliant with their medications. They don't miss a, a, a medication, a daily medication, which in real world people do. Uh, there's a lot of you know, differences in the way that you know, many times in a control trial it's a placebo or a sugar pill. Well, that's not what you're comparing to out in real world. You're comparing to another therapy that's, uh, that's being utilized. And the market demand is here for this type of evidence that historically we've been trying to use trials that are designed for a drug to be approved, so the efficacy and safety of a product, and trying to leverage those results for a different decision. And that decision, again, being around a clinical practice decision or a decision around health policy. And so because of you know, increasing costs in, in the healthcare system, specifically uh, in pharmacologic and, and biologic agents, uh, you're seeing more of a demand for, for these types of data to be generated uh, for us to make the most informed decisions. Uh, to you know, provide the most effective medications at, at the you know, appropriate cost. So if, if, if I would take this down to the, to the individual level, and why is it important for a patient as they come into their, their provider's office to know that these data are being generated and available for their decision making in, in the practice, uh, really it comes down to the fact that, uh, again, the, the, the individual has the right type of information with, with good sound evidence coming out of an appropriate design study uh, to make the decision in your specific disorder. And if we reflect back, a lot of the guidelines that are being currently used for decision making are not based on sound evidence. Um, there's a lot of evidentiary gaps that we have in, in practice now that providers have to fill in those gaps with the best they can do with the evidence available to them. And again, what we're doing here is providing them more sound evidence to be part of that decision making. So if anything, it'll give individuals more confidence as they work with their providers that the decisions that they're making are made with more sound and more applicable evidence to them. If we walk through the development process of a product for diabetes, and in randomized controlled trials, they'll walk through what's called phase one, phase two, phase three of investigation. And as you go through specifically phase two and phase three, you start to expand out the number of patients that are studied, but they're still done in very controlled protocols, controlled designs with folks that specifically have diabetes, but don't have a lot of other comorbidities or may not have a lot of other comorbidities that are associated with diabetes, like high blood pressure, like high cholesterol, because in those studies, they're really trying to find out the efficacy of that drug, specifically at improving the patient's diabetes. And they don't want any confounding disorders to have any impact on that eventual result. When you move out into the real world, typically folks with diabetes do have multiple disorders. Many of them are obese. They do have high blood pressure. They do have high cholesterol, uh, along with their diabetes. And so in a pragmatic study, we have the opportunity now to study that specific medication in those types of populations that are more commonly seen out in practice or maybe you know commonly found in in large payers in, in their membership. The industry has been doing and we've been, been involved in observational research now for the better part of two decades and what we've seen now in this most recent movement into an interest in pragmatic clinical trials is the fact that the interest and need for these types of designs and information they generate uh, again are required because the folks that are making the evaluations of, of use of products so the decision makers in, in health policy uh, the payer marketplace even down to the clinician level where again risk is being taken by those individuals on their choice of therapies they're asking for these types of data and they're realizing that what they've been using in randomized clinical trials to make those decisions are suboptimal for what they're trying to do and there is a way to correct that these studies will generate that type of evidence and importantly this evidence is not in replacement of the evidence that's needed for drug approval, it's, it's, it's in addition to. And so that demand's there now because, uh, quite frankly, the need uh, to better assess the value of these products in the healthcare system. Mm -hmm.